Creating these classes requires equipment and services that cost money. If you appreciate this education, please think about going to elithecomputerguy.com and offering a one-time or monthly recurring donation. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be using PHP in order to insert uh, data into a MySQL database table. So we're going to create two variables today. We're going to create a just a random variable to create a random number, just to give us some kind of garbage information to put into the table. And then we're going to create a timestamp variable. Uh, that is basically just going to be a timestamp in seconds, just to show us that the time is actually counting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a PHP script that is going to connect to the database, that is going to connect to a table that I've already created, uh, and then we will then add these additional records, and you will see that it is relatively easy. Now, it is important to understand when you're uh, dealing with PHP, when you're learning PHP, that there are multiple components to whenever you create a full-fledged program. So right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding the variables and creating the variables within the PHP script, and then simply inserting those into the MySQL database. Now, how this would work in the real world world in general is that you would have something like an HTML form. So the HTML form would have the user input information. Then when you hit submit, the information that the user inputted would be turned into variables. And then from there, uh, the PHP script would insert it into the MySQL database. So that is an important thing to be thinking about again, whenever you learn coding is to realize you're learning individual components that later all get tied together to create a finished product. So right now uh, we're learning how to use PHP HP to input the data into MySQL. Then in the future, I'll show you how to create an HTML form that will hand the data over to, to a PHP script that will turn that data into variables that will then do basically what I'm showing you how to do today, uh, which is insert the data into the MySQL table. So there actually today are not any warning, warning, Will Robinson, warning, warnings. Uh, it's all a pretty simple thing that I'm going to be showing you how to do today. So with that, let's go over to the computer so I can show you how this works. So here we are again at my lab environment. Again, I've got Ubuntu desktop uh, 18.04 LTS, but again, any version of Ubuntu desktop uh, should work for you fine. I have that running within a virtual machine on my MacBook Pro. I did use task cell to install the entire LAMP stack onto this particular system. So I have Apache MySQL PHP installed all with their default configurations. I have not modified the php.ini or vhost or anything like that. The only slightly additional thing that I've done is I've created a PHP folder within the Apache root directory uh, so that I dump all these PHP lab scripts in there uh, and that's where I call them from. So that is the, the only difference from a basically a default standard uh, installation. So this is the script right here. Uh, I did write this script in gedit, but before we get to the script, let's go over and take a look at our MySQL database. Uh, so you go down, you click on the little uh, bubble uh, ball things, you type in terminal up here to get us into terminal in order to log into uh, oh to MySQL, MySQL space hyphen U, Bob is our username, space hyphen P to ask for the password. Password is one, two, three, four, five, six. And we are now in our MySQL database uh, for our server. From here, we do show databases. Uh, so we know what databases we're dealing with. Again, we've got information schema, all the default standards. Uh, the database that we're going to be carrying about today is class DB. Again, this is one of the most important things when you learn how to code. Remember, uh, code is very specific, right? If you misspell a, a, a word, a database, a table in your code, there is no spell check. The, 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 uh, the, the computer is not going to try to guess what you meant. Uh, it's either right or it's wrong. So one of the big problems with new coders is frankly, they just misspell crap. <laughs> if you misspell crap, your, your script is not going to work. So remember, it's class uh, uppercase DB. Uh, so from here, we're going to use go into class DB. So cl use class DB semicolon. We go ent uh, enter database change, and then we're going to go show tables to show us what tables is in the class DB database, uh, and we see what database uh, what tables we have. So we have an insert demo, we have a parts, a parts BAK, an update demo we'll deal with later, uh, and a vendors table. So the table that we're going to be dealing with today is the insert underscore demo table. Uh, so we want to take a look at that, make sure we know what's going on with that table. So we're going to do uh, the describe, D-E-S-C, insert underscore table, and then semicolon to see what this table is. Oops, and again, that's where if you don't type in the right thing, uh, you won't get the result you're looking for. We don't want insert underscore table. We want describe insert, oh my Christ, I'm not doing well today. Insert underscore 
uh, demo is a table we're looking for today. Then we do semicolon and we take a look at this particular table. Uh, so this table has three fields. We have an update underscore ID field. Uh, this is the primary key and it's the auto increment. So this just basically gives us our record number for this particular table. Uh, then we have a random var uh, field. Uh, this is an integer. Uh, so this is where we are just going to simply dump in a random variable. Again, you could have name, you could have phone number, you could have whatever, whatever field you want. We're just going to dump in a random variable. Uh, the reason that I'm doing that is to show you that it, it, it does update and there is a difference. Uh, if I hard coded like a name such as Bob, then all you see is Bob 30 times. So I think putting a random variable in there, it just makes you really be able to understand that things are getting updated with new information. Uh, then past that, um, I'm just going to do put in a little timestamp field. Uh, you will notice with both these fields, I just use the standard integer INT because again, I believe in teaching you as little as possible. <laughs> I don't want you to screw up something trying to use one of the one of the time uh, data types uh, to put in uh, information. So you can simply do a timestamp and use an int uh, for that 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 data type. Uh, it is not specifically what you should use in a production environment, but it does work in this environment. And right now, all I care is that it works for you. So uh, update underscore ID is going to be an int. It's going to be your primary key, and it's going to be an auto rank command. Random var is going to be an int. Timestamp is going to be an int. Uh, and you should know how to be able to create a table like this at this point. Uh, so from this point, we're going to go over and we are now going to take a look at the PHP script that I wrote. Now again, uh, with PHP scripts uh, for these uh, classes, all I'm using is gedit. So you can use a basic text editor in order to create PHP scripts. Again, when I'm dealing with small scripts, I prefer to use a basic uh, text editor just to show you how easy it is. A lot of people get confused with more complicated IDEs and they give up. They think they don't understand coding when in reality they, they, they don't understand the IDE. Again, it's one of those that gets into a mess. So this is basically just using a standard text editor. Uh, so we go up here and we take a look at the script. It's pretty simple, a lot of stuff that we've seen before. Uh, so again, we open the PHP script up here. Uh, then we do a dollar sign server name. And for this, it's going to be the local host since the, the MySQL server uh, is on the exact same server as the Apache server. Uh, username, so we need a user account that actually has access to this database. Again, if you create a user account, but you forget to get, give it a privileges, you're gonna have problems. Uh, so again, when you're doing demos, I suggest basically create a root level user, use that root level user in order to test. Uh, and then once you have something that you actually wanna use, then restrict what that root level user is able to do or create another account that can do it. Anyways, then we have a password, one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, we have down here, uh, DB for the database. And of course, we're gonna be uh, connecting to the class DB. Uh, past that, I did create two uh, other variables here. Uh, dollar sign ran num. This is just for the random number that we're going to be plugging in. Uh, and for this, we are using the random function. So R-A-N-D, uh, open parentheses, close parentheses. This is a random function that basically just creates a random number. So every time this runs, it will create a brand new random number for us. Uh, then I have a dollar sign timestamp, and I'm using the time function from PHP. Uh, basically, what this does is it shows the time in seconds from something called epoch. Uh, so this isn't going to be nicely formatted. Uh, again, I just want to kind of give you the idea of that time is moving on and you can see the time difference. That's why I'm using these two particular variables. Y you can do whatever the hell you want in here. Uh, past that, we're going to go down here uh, and we're going to create our connection. So we do dollar sign con as we did before, new, uh, MySQL I, plug in server name, plug in username, plug in password, and plug in the uh, database, close parentheses, and of course you do the semicolon. Then we come down here to the connection. So we're going to try to connect if. And as before, if there's a connection error, uh, then kill the connection and print out connection failed, concatenate with whatever the hell the connection error is. We've talked about that in previous classes, won't go over that here. Uh, then uh, we close that if statement and we come down here to the SQL statement. So just like we did a SQL statement for the select before, uh, basically we're just creating a dollar sign SQL statement uh, and we're creating what the SQL statement is. Uh, insert, so uh, double quotation marks, insert into table, so whatever your table name is, so insert dem a demo, uh, and then here, open parentheses, uh, and we, we do the two columns that we're inserting data into. So uh, the first column was random var, the second column is timestamp. Now again, for this, 
this is coming from that MySQL server. So again, random var is the first uh, column that we're dealing with. Timestamp is the second column that we're dealing with. This is what we're referencing here, those two columns. Then past that, we're going to say values like we normally do, open parentheses. And then really the only difference here, uh, as far as the values go and, as, as a normal insert uh, SQL statement, is we're simply, we're simply referencing the variable versus plugging in specific information. So here what we're doing is re re referencing uh, the value of dollar sign ran num. So every time this script runs, a random number will be created, the value of ran num will be, be given, be given that value, and then this will be inserted into the table here. Same is true with the timestamp. Every time that the script is run, a new timestamp will be created, a dollar sign timestamp will be given the value of that new timestamp, uh, and then it will be plugged in here. Uh, so again, this gives us a nice little dynamic script so we can see things are actually updating. Uh, past that, we're then just going to get down to uh, the actual uh, whether or not this is going to work for us. So basically what we do here, and this is important, so we want to make sure that everything goes in. So if, and then we do dollar sign connection, so we're referencing this up here, we're going to do the query, so we're going to do the query function, and the query that we're giving is the value of dollar sign uh, SQL. So basically we're giving the value here. Now what we have here is three equal signs, three equal signs. So if you're used to coding, uh, one equal sign generally means this is equal to something. So random is equal to a random number. Two equal signs basically means that both are the same. So that let's say X does X equal equal 11. Like if X equal equals 11, then do something else, right? But what's interesting though is when it's doing double um, the, the double equals, basically it's just looking for if if the number is equal. So do, does x equal 11? What you do here is when you do three equal signs, not only is it that the value is equal, but it's also that the data type is equal, right? So you can have 11 um, as, as text and 11 as int, right? So if you did equal equal, and that you have 11 as a, as a, a uh, text data type and 11 as an int data type, then those two numbers themselves would be equal, right? But the data types themselves are not equal. So one is an 11 text and one is an 11 int. So when you do three equal signs all together, it's that the value and the data type is the same. Um, and so for here, then we're going to do uppercase true. So basically what this means is that did, did this actually get inserted into uh, the, the table, right? Because that, that can be a big problem. You plug in all the information and for some reason the connection drops or you miscoded something. We want to make sure that's actually true. Uh, if it is actually true, uh, what we're going to print out is random number uh, concatenated with whatever the value of random number is. And then we're going to do timestamp concatenated with whatever the value of timestamp is. Else, else, if there's a problem, echo error, uh, what the SQL statement is, uh, and then basically what the connection error is. Past that, we're then going to close the else, uh, and then we're going to do the connection, and we're going to close the connection so that we close all of this out. And so this is all that's required for this particular script. Uh, so we're going to go up here, uh, we're going to open up Firefox, and uh, now uh, all we have to do is call the script. So I've already saved this. This is called php insert.php, and it is sitting within the PHP directory of Apache. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 127.0.0.1. This is our loopback address uh, forward slash PHP since we created that folder uh, in the root directory. Uh, and then we're simply just going to uh, go to php in insert.php uh, and we're going to hit enter if everything goes right then again so what we got random number and what the random number is we have timestamp and what the timestamp is so we can see 15676177914 i hit refresh it goes up to 27 we refresh goes up goes up goes up and so that's a nice part here is you can see that these are dynamically changing so when you hit refresh you know that something has changed right that's a problem if you put in the static values to variable so let's say bob and just a static time if you hit refresh you don't actually know if you're getting any new results so since you're using this, this dynamic again with the timestamp and the random you know that you're getting updated results. So with that, we can go uh, back to our MySQL uh, server, our MySQL. Uh, from here, we can do select uh, all uh, from insert underscore demo. 
Uh, that's the table we're dealing with, semicolon, and then we're going to hit enter. Uh, so we can see the update IDs. Uh, so I, I had done other updates. I had been messing around with this table before the class. So we can see it starts at 14 because I actually deleted the previous ones. So we can see that these are the new uh, records that have been created uh, since I created the script and we've been doing this demo. So we can see uh, we're up to record 22. If I go here, let's say I hit refresh again, and I hit refresh again, again, 7991, you can see that for the timestamp. You just select all from demo, insert demo again, and we can see now we are down to record 24, and we have 7991, uh, which is the same as what is here. Uh, so again, this is one of those big things to be thinking about, especially when you're learning to code, basically looking at ways that you can fact check yourself. Make sure uh, that, again, things are being dynamically created. Make sure that you can check that records in the database actually match the records you're trying to put in the database. So the nice part about this, again, using that random number and using that timestamp, it, it constantly is creating a new random number and a new timestamp. And since uh, you're actually putting this out, you're actually printing this to the screen, you can then verify that everything is correct between MySQL and your web browser. Uh, and so that's really all there is to this. Again, basically we've got the normal part up here. Uh, these are all the variables for connecting to your database. Uh, then we're creating some random variables here, or we're creating one random variable and one timestamp. We're creating dynamic variables here. Uh, we're doing the standard connection that we've done a number of times now. We do the if connection error that we've done a number of times now. Uh, we use we create the SQL variable as we did it in the last class. Only with this one, we're doing insert instead of select. Uh, and then for the values, we're uh, referencing the variable names instead of static variables. Uh, then we come down here, if, and then we do connection query. And so we actually call that SQL statement, what is here? If it equal, equal, equals true, uh, then we're going to print out something on the screen. If else, it is going to print out an error. So um, let's say uh, with this, Oh, let's see, I do random num one. So let's say I screw up uh, with creating this variable and I hit save. We go up here, uh, then I go and do a refresh. We can see that it actually prints out that there is an error. And again, this is the kind of thing, uh, not only should you be testing out to make sure that your scripts work, you should go in and intentionally break your scripts and see what the errors are. Because remember, as a tech professional, you get called in to fix broken things. So if you're only ever used to working on working things, then when you see errors, it's gonna be a problem. So while you're writing these scripts, actually actually break like if if you write it perfectly if you don't fat finger anything actually start trying to break it and see like what errors do you get you know just throw in random stuff and you know see see what happens so that you know that when you see that in the future you'll know what to do so anyways with that that's all there is to inserting data into a mysql database uh, using php and so now you know how to use PHP to insert values into your MySQL database tables. Now, again, uh, when I'm talking about the, these variables, do you realize in the real world, when you're in a production environment, these variables would be coming from somewhere. So something like an HTML uh, form, the HTML form takes the data, the PHP script will turn uh, that data into uh, values for variables, and then it will pass it to the table in your MySQL database server. Or let's say if you're parsing something like text files, or you're doing some kind of web scraping, basically you would have one script that would go through, that would scrape a data file, grab information that it wants to turn into variables, basically submit somewhere. The PHP script, again, would then take uh, those those those, vari those values, assign it to variables, and then print those, those variables values into your MySQL table. So with this, again, that's why I used the RAND uh, the RAND function within PHP and the timestamp function within PHP because this gives you a dynamic update uh, for the, the value of those variables without actually at this point having to tie into something else, which will get a little bit more complicated. Uh, so as always, uh, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing the next one. Apparently, the type of content you just saw is not what Susan W. wants for the future of YouTube. This means that recommendations by YouTube to this channel have dropped massively and views are becoming comically small. I hate to ask. I used to say I would never ask. But if you could subscribe, like, comment, and most importantly, share the videos that you appreciate, that may help slow the death of this channel. Do remember that if anything at all happens to this channel, you can go to elithecomputerguy.com to view the content and access information not available on YouTube.